Hello, this is Rhonda MP and this is my podcast. Today I'm going to introduce you to my favourite program, Rocketman. Let's start by executing a completed version of the program. The user instigates gameplay by clicking on the launch button. There is a countdown and then the rocket launches moving up the form until it finally disappears off the top, at which time the game is over. Now, let's have a look at how to code this program and what's involved. First, we need to open up Microsoft Visual Studio, create a new project in the programming language of our choice, C Sharp, Windows Forms application, naming it appropriately. In a location, Fun Programs, of course. Now what we're going to do is place all the objects on the form that we require and then the code behind each object. Our launch button. In properties we need to name this launch button appropriately according to our naming convention with a prefix of btn for button and its purpose indicated in its name. Likewise, text with purpose so it's clear to the user. And now our label which will contain our countdown value. Naming convention, prefix LBL for label. If we change auto size to false, we can then resize our label, aligning it with our button. Change the border style. Font, making it larger and bold. Text is not required as we'll be placing the text based on our code. And now two picture boxes to hold the image of our rocket and smoke. Placing an image in that box, click on the ellipses button with three dots. In the bin debug images folder select rocket, change that to auto size and then place the rocket just at the bottom of the form. Another picture box for the smoke image and voila we have all the objects that we require on the form we need to place three timers but it would be opportune at this moment to have a look at exactly how the timers work and how the code hangs together it's all based on these three timers. This flow diagram demonstrates how the timers are used to control the Rocketman program. When the user clicks on the launch button, the countdown variable is set to zero and the timer is enabled. Code placed in a timer executes at predetermined intervals. Here, the countdown variable is displayed and continues to decrement by one until the countdown is equivalent to zero, at which point the countdown time is disabled 
and the takeoff timer enabled. The purpose of this timer is simply to place the smoke under the rocket image. Once this has been done, the timer is disabled and the rocket timer is enabled. Where the rocket and the smoke are moved up the form in increments until both are off the top of the form, at which point the game is over. With that in mind, let's place the three timers on the form required to run the program. In the toolbox components, select timer, properties, name the timer according to a naming convention, prefix TMR for timer, purpose of timer, interval 2000 milliseconds equivalent to two seconds. Any code placed inside this timer will execute every two seconds. Our second timer. and our final timer. We're going to leave the interval at 100, which is equivalent to 0.1 second, because we want the rocket and the smoke to move up the form at quite a pace. And there we go, that's our three timers. With the form complete, we can now get onto some exciting code. First, we double click on the launch button this auto generates code for us. Very helpful. We declare a variable of type int to contain our countdown value. Inside the button launch event, we initialize countdown to start at 3. We enable the countdown timer. and disable the button launch. Inside our countdown timer, we want to display the countdown variable to our form label. Converting it to a string in order to do so. We check if the countdown variable is equivalent to zero. And if so, disable the countdown timer. And enable the takeoff timer. Otherwise, we decrement the countdown variable by 1. Now, our takeoff timer is all about positioning the smoke underneath the rocket. The rocket is placed at the bottom of the form. The placement of objects on a form is based on the XY coordinates of the top left of the object. The top left of a form is the 0, 0 coordinate. You'll notice moving to the left along the x-axis decreases while to the right increases. However, contrary to what we learnt at school, the y-axis decreases as we move up the screen. In order to place the smoke underneath the rocket, we use known properties. For example, rocket.top plus rocket.height plus a nominal 10 places the smoke like so and then smoke.left equals rocket.left completes the placement of the smoke. Now let's code up our takeoff timer. We need to place the smoke underneath the rocket
and then left align the smoke with the rocket making the smoke visible disabling the takeoff timer and enabling the rocket timer in the third timer the rocket and smoke objects are moved in increments of 10. This code is executed every two seconds until the point at which the smoke is no longer visible on the form. As we move up the form, the Y value decreases. To determine if the smoke has left the form, we use known properties. Smoke.top plus smoke.height less than or equal to zero. In the rocket timer we need to decrease the dot top property in order for the rocket and smoke to move up the form. A coding shortcut You can use either, they're both the same. And now we need to determine if the smoke has left the form. If it has, we stop the rocket timer. And voila, that's our program complete. Let's run it. Launch our rocket. It performs a countdown. We'll be working on sound next week. and then it launches off the form perfection and that my friend is the exciting program of Rocketman so I hope you've enjoyed our session today and I bid you farewell <laughs>